how does it feel to be a member of the Senate? You know what, it feels amazing. It was really a proud day. I'm very humbled to serve, and the best part of the day is that I had a former senator, uh, Richard Bryan, I restored his seat, walked me uh, down the aisle to be sworn in. So I was a little bit of Nevada history, very proud and humbled to walk in his footsteps. All right, so new chamber, same problem, primarily the government shutdown. Yes. How do we move beyond that? What's the next step or the compromise here? Well, I think what the president has to do is he has to come out of his room and bring everyone to the table to have a conversation. He doesn't have the luxury to keep the government closed while he's holed up and being stubborn. People's mortgages are at stake, their car payments, their doctor bills, putting food on the table. So he needs to come together with all of leadership. We passed a, They passed a bill in the Senate, sent it to the House before the last session ended. Um, we thought we had a deal, and the president decided uh, not to do that. He needs to come out of his room and go back to work. The House says they're taking up, maybe already have, I've been here, but the, that bill and passing it back to the Senate. But I understand Leader McConnell says he won't be taking it up. I haven't watched what's been on the floor today, so I'm not sure if they've passed that yet. I've heard the same things that you have, that they're planning to pass that today or tomorrow. Uh, I hope that Senator McConnell will uh, consider if they pass a very similar or the same bill and send that back to the bill that was passed uh, unanimous or by voice vote, I believe, uh, at the end of last session, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I hope that cooler heads prevail and remember who they're letting down, the hardworking uh, men and women who uh, work in our national parks, work in our Department of Interior, work for Homeland Security. It's not fair to them. Is the blame solely on the president here? I mean, is it up to both sides to reach a compromise? Well, I can tell you that in the 115th Congress, the Republicans had the House, they had the Senate, and they had the presidency. They've left money on the table from last Congress that they haven't spent on the wall, if you want to talk about it like that. And so they had the ability to pass what they wanted to do. They weren't able to come to the table and even decide amongst themselves what the right thing was to do, and now they're trying to blame it on us. Trump and the Republicans clearly own this shutdown. Okay, and that issue aside, yeah. Uh, Moving forward in this Congress, what issues do you want to focus on? Are there committees you've got your eye on? You know, what, what happens for you? Oh, well, I'm really excited about my committees. They're great for me. They're great for Nevada. I'm sitting on the Commerce Committee. It has tourism, transportation. I'm a former computer programmer, so it has those areas of technology and cybersecurity. I'm sitting on the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, the Health Committee. I'm very proud to do that. I'm on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs. We're on small business and uh, the Committee on Aging. So wonderful committees. I'm excited to work on those. I promised uh, our constituents the number one thing that I heard in Nevada was to protect those pre-existing conditions. I was very proud to leave the resolution in the House that allowed us to sign on. We had about 190 co-sponsors to the federal lawsuit uh, protecting the constitutionality of pre-existing conditions in the Affordable Care Act. I believe that that's part of the rules package that uh, they're going to be putting on the floor this week in the House. And I believe we'll be doing the same um, in the Senate.